a hash map is a very interesting data structure so what is a hash map hash map is a data structure which stores a key value pair so basically it has uh, two conditions which must be taken care of that each key in the hash is unique and given a key the associated value can be retrieved in constant time so note that it is not one unit of time but rather constant time because all these data structures they have a certain amount of overhead so till the time the overhead does not depend on number of elements in the data structure it is fine hash maps are used a lot especially in languages such as perl as well as uh, most of the other scripting languages they are very popular so in simple terms what it means is that uh, you want to provide a string key and then store the value of the element so you can just do a arbitrary key based lookup on the data structure and this is a very powerful feature so how does the hash map actually work so this is what has been shown here pictorially so given a string there is a hashing function what the hashing function is going to do is it is going to take the string and convert it into a index and this is the index which is then used to actually get or retrieve the data from the underlying array or any other data structure which is there so here just for simplicity we have uh, taken a underlying data structure as that of an array so as we can see that the the location 0 location 1 2 3 3 and the idx in square bracket double quotes ab just to show that if we try to retrieve the value of ab from the hash map we will get a value of 10 and this ab is actually residing at location 0 then ba which has a value of 20 is residing at location 1 idx a value of 100 is residing at location 2 and c with a value of 500 it at location 3 so the hashing function is going to use this particular key that is a b b a a or c and then convert it into the location in this particular array or a vector so hash map can be indexed over arbitrary strings and the hash function is going to convert the string to indices the important thing to note here is that a good hash function has very little or no collisions so what is meant by a collision that is no two strings end up with the same index and this is a problem why because if two strings end up with the same index then you will need to find out a way to store both the values as well as during retrieval you have to find a way to efficiently retrieve the values so you can iterate over the elements of a hash map however note one thing that the order is undefined and this is one problem which is uh, very commonly encountered in last software and though at that point of time it is not very obvious but in a small program it can be shown very easily so what people typically do is they actually create a hash map using pointers so based on a particular pointer of an object or anything else you are going to index the values and the pointer is going to serve as a key now when you start iterating over this what is going to happen is that each time you insert a new pointer in the hash map the ordering may change so you are going to get a different ordering and secondly the ordering is going to even change from run to run because every time the pointers which come in there are going to have a different address so if you are using a pointer as a key just keep this in mind that the ordering is not going to stay same from the same run itself as well as the ordering is going to change from run to run so if your program has a underlying bug it is going to show up differently in case of each run of the program and in a large piece of software such problems are quite difficult to debug so it is better not to introduce them in the first place the efficiently supported operations in case of a hash map the square bracket operator which is just like the operator which we have seen in case of vectors or arrays accesses the element with a particular key in constant steps find operation find whether an element exists in a hash or not is again done in constant steps size number of elements in the hash is going to return this in constant steps is empty which works on top of size is going to find whether the hash is empty or not in constant steps erase is going to delete an element from the hash in constant steps 
Couple of other operations also which we have not shown here because they are already assumed. The iteration or traversing all the elements of the hash from beginning to end. Of course, as we have already noticed or heard that the ordering can change and it may change. It is not a data structure which preserves the ordering. But this kind of iteration can be done in order n time where n is the number of elements in the data structure. Couple of other operations are also there and once we look at the STL implementation next, then go and look up on the STL manual and try out those operations. Our demonstration of the collision issue as well as what is done when we actually encounter a collision. So given a string, the hashing function is going to calculate an index out of that. However, what can happen is that uh, two strings may end up with the same index. So as shown here, the string z, l, k, n, all of them actually have a different index. But both a, b as well as a end up with the same index 3. So what is going to happen in this case is, and this is a very simple example, is that a linked list is created at that point which each of the elements. So at index 3, instead of having a single element, we have a linked list. The first element is the one with the key AB and the second element is one with the key A. So after a collision, multiple keys are going to lead to this and then a linear search will be carried out at this point to find the exact match or whether that match exists or not. So as you can see, this is immediately going to disrupt the constant time lookup operation of hash. So good hash functions are going to minimize collisions. And there is an entire big area of research wherein people have tried to find out what are the good hashing functions, which actually reduce the collisions over a large set of keys. That is something which we are not going to go in detail here, but uh, it is something which you must keep in mind as hash is a very interesting data structure both from the point of application as well as from the point of view of questions in the interviews. So a good hashing function and you can try out various hashing functions. Start with something as simple as uh, something which just adds up the ASCII values of all the various characters in the key given to it and then just does it a modulo prime number, try out and try it out for a very large number of keys and see how many collisions you get. A good hash function is going to minimize these collisions. Maybe look up the Wikipedia article about the hashing functions and see if you can implement one or two of those. The STL implementation for the hash map. So catch here is that the standard hash map the one that we have seen till now is not part of the standard STL. Rather, there is a different map data structure which um, almost comes close in performance to the hash map data structure. That is what is part of the standard STL. So this is the reason why we have a different namespace here, as you can see. So before that, we hash include a file ext slash hash underscore map. Uh, this is in the extensions directory of wherever the all the other standard headers are kept. Hash include iostream, then namespace std we know. So the additional namespace what we do is a underscore underscore gnu underscore cxx. The reason for doing so is that the hash map is a extended routine which has been put there and this is not part of the standard space, standard namespace. Rather it is part of the this unconventional or non-standard underscore underscore gnu underscore cxx. So the problem is that the moment you move from GCC or gnu compiler collection to a different compiler, then this program is no longer going to compile. So how do we use it? We have a struct eqstr bool operator. It's actually overloading the comparison function here and that given two strings, the const care pointer S1 and S2, basically tell me whether they are same or not. So the way we do it is, we just do str cmp S1, S2 is equal to zero. So no need to get into too much detail of this particular implementation because hash map is the one which is, I believe, very infrequently used. I have not seen uh, too many usages of hash map in the real world code, 
Rather, the map which we are going to see next is the one which is commonly used. So, in the int main, we actually have a hash map, constant pointer, int, hash, constant pointer, comma, eqstr. So, what we are saying is, what is going to be my key, what is going to be my value, and couple of other arguments to the template, and we define a hash h. From that point onward, we can use it very simply. We can say h, 1, 2, 3, 4, and as you can see, we are using constant pointers or strings to insert the values. Just that what we have written is, ONE, THR, FUR, just abbreviated those names. So we could have as well used any string here. This is just to have some, give them some semantic meaning. Once we have inserted the keys, we actually print them out, H1 as well as HFUR. And it is going to return us the correct integer values. So here is a sample run of this program. And as we can see, it returns the value 1 and 4. And that is the values which we had stored. So you can try out this uh, particular program yourself. Rather, you should try it out. See what the various parameters of this hash map template are, what it is that they contain, and try tweaking them a bit. However, as said previously, uh, hash map is non standard and uh, it is okay to just play around with it, but do not try to use this any of the your C code. And that is where you should use the standard map, which is part of the standard C++.